Today, we will be discussing possible future iterations of SpaceX's BFR, now called the Starship. I just want to let you know that we appreciate all your feedback. As you may already be aware of or not, two years ago we decided to go to work on Astra X full-time. About a year ago, YouTube reworked their system to be geared toward channels that post lots of content rapidly. It has been said that this does encourage lower quality content in order to meet the rapid uploading schedule YouTube's algorithm demands. For channels like ours, where each video takes days of research and thought and compiling and rendering, we simply cannot post frequently enough to generate the necessary funds so that we may continue doing Astron X full time, let alone produce quality video once a week. Therefore, in order for us to continue our mission without delay or slowdown, we need your help in the form of just one dollar per month. That is why we and many others have had to resort to Patreon and is also the reason for why we will now be producing shorter videos in between our regular longer videos. So to help support videos like this one, possible future SpaceX Starships, by becoming a patron at patreon forward slash astronx. Thank you. Recently, Elon Musk announced that the BFR is now to be called Starship and the booster, the Super Heavy. Musk further stated that radical changes were coming to the BFR, now Starship, and that the future versions will actually be real Starships. That is, they will be true interstellar space vessels. Very exciting. In order to achieve this, uh, SpaceX will need to investigate the use of fusion and perhaps antimatter for use as Starship engines. We made a video on this very topic some months back called Interplanetary Fusion Rockets, where we explained how fusion, after decades of waiting, is finally coming around. Before Elon's rockets can truly become Starships, the rest of the vessel will need to be upgraded first. So then, what does the future hold for SpaceX Starships? The Starship, being chemically powered, will become more or less obsolete once more powerful fusion engines, often called torch drives, for their brilliant glow when active, putting it mildly, are employed. If fusion is developed within the next decade, it will mean the obsolescence of current chemically powered Starship. Therefore, SpaceX will need a new replacement, one powered by fusion. So here's our proposal. Two designs, one specialized for handling bulk cargo and the other for rapid and comfortable passenger transit. For carrying bulk cargo, a spherical or mostly spherical shape is best, as it provides the most volume for the least material to enclose it. Engines mounted high on the sides and angled outward allows the cargo to be stored at the bottom and or stored higher within a central cargo lift shaft. Furthermore, high and angled engines reduce the amount of damage done to the pad during takeoff and landing. Of course, chances are electrodynamic propulsion will be used during atmospheric takeoffs and landings in place of the fusion torch drives with some sort of magnetic mass driver-like system being used for takeoff and landings on airless or nearly airless worlds. Or, perhaps paragravity will work out and be utilized. For passengers, a sphere is perfectly feasible, but a smaller, taller, skinnier design, rocket-shaped, will allow more rapid embarking and disembarking, whilst a wide sphere might take longer to board and exit from. Keep in mind, both designs, but especially a passenger vehicle, will come in at a time when there'll be much more spacecraft handling infrastructure on Terra, Luna, and Mars alike. This means that the awkwardness of unloading folks and cargo from a tall design is somewhat negated. Just land directly or move the craft into an embarkation, disembarkation tower 
where each deck is unloaded or loaded by an extending platform already at the same level. Both designs would make use of magnetohydrodynamic radiation shielding, many closely spaced superconducting coils to produce very powerful fields on the order of 50 Teslas as first proposed by Dr. Pierre Petit. If paragravity is used, the spacecraft could accelerate at, say, 30 times Terra's gravity, and yet the passengers would feel only Terra normal gravity or Mars normal or Luna normal, whatever is preferred. If paragravity is not used, then the acceleration may be limited to around the equivalent of Martian gravity with a travel time of three days to a week. So what do you think? Give us your thoughts and inputs in the comment section below or head over to our Twitter and let us know there or both. Don't forget to subscribe and if you can support us on Patreon. Remember to check the community tab on your YouTube channel page in order to stay up to date on the latest activity and upcoming videos amongst other general announcements. Until then, keep wondering about space.